Thank you for tuning in today and welcome to EATS 2020. We are going to talk about multi-point synthesis of hybrid electric gas turbines. This is joint work with the Swedish universities of Chalmers from Stockholm and Maladalen from Westerhaus. My name is Michael and I work for Modelon. Over the next 20 minutes, we will go through the motivation for this work, the methodology building on multi-point design, and results in terms of modeling and simple trade studies. I will then wrap up with conclusions. This is driven largely by the societal question of how we can improve the environmental footprint for large commercial aircraft. According to the scientific state of the art, hybrid electric concepts are one promising approach. Here, the so-called boosted turbofan seems to be favorable according to first results. The overall concept is simple. We just store both conventional fuel and electrical energy in the wing, additionally drive the turbofan electrically in some part, and also add a thermal management system to extract dissipated heat. More or less detailed studies say that this boosted turbofan may be part of the first step in some incremental solution to the environmental impact. However, there is really limited literature on the characteristics of such designs and the methodology to create them. Now, our objective is just to understand these design methodologies for these hybrid cycles. And we ask ourselves, how can we apply what industry considers the right and rigorous methodology for the synthesis across multiple operating points, these so-called multi-point synthesis or multi-point design schemes. Um, also with respect to the two published methodologies, how do the results compare that we get if we apply the methodologies to the same cycle model? And finally, what are really the pros and the cons of the alternative options to define the multipoint synthesis with these so-called so -called closure equations? So let's move on to the methodology. So this may be clear to most of the audience, however, for accessibility of the matter, here's a one sentence definition of what multipoint design really is. Um, it is the concurrent use of design and of design cycle models to satisfy both physical balance equations and design rules. So in that sense, it's a natural extension to the sequential classic design because it really means solving a design problem and several of design problems concurrently with the same numerical solver. And additionally, this then alleviates this need to manually track consistency between inputs and targets. The latter are simply formulated as residual equations or constraints. The figure now illustrates how we're using various operating conditions throughout a mission. Um, some conditions, such as the ones marked with the dots, are combined into a single simulation problem, and only one of them obviously can be a design point. We're working here with two main documented schemes, one coming originally out of Cranfield and Melodon University, the other one coming from Raytheon Technologies Research Center. The difference between both is in how the boost power is prescribed. That's either working explicitly or through temperature ratios, but we'll see that in more detail on the other slides. We use synthesis matching tables to describe the multipoint schemes. This notation is described in papers in some more detail, but as it's important for you to understand the following slides, I'll take a bit of time to describe this here. So um, first note that the simulation problems only mathematically square when including certain closure equations. Otherwise, there will be some quantities that are not defined, such as fuel flow or combustor outlet temperature. And the closure equations can then define sizing, so how much airflow to ingest on the design point, operation of the gas turbine, how much fuel to inject into the combustor. And in these closure equations, we categorize variables into synthesis variables and target variables. And a synthesis variable is really a degree of freedom or and also computational input selected by the modeler. For instance, the fuel flow or the fuel to air ratio. The user can then prescribe the value of these synthesis variables either explicitly or implicitly by uh, defining some threshold uh, for an implicit closure equation. 
um, and these thresholds are then called target variables. Um, an example, this could be our T4 combustor outlet temperature. And then in each table, uh, in an example here, we're listing all the cases of the operating envel envelope as the columns. Um, the first case is usually the design point. And then as rows, we first list the target variables um, and the categories of sizing and operating point target variables. And then we list all the synthesis variables again in those two categories. Um, you can also see that sizing synthesis variables cannot have different values across the different operating conditions. So those cells stretch across all columns. Um, and if there is a cell that is empty, uh, yeah, obviously the value can be computed, but it's not prescribed in any sense. Here is an example. This is a simple multi-point uh, turbojet design. If we prescribe, for instance, uh, the net thrust and uh, some uh, turbine inlet temperature here, we can define the synthesis variables, overall airflow rate at the design point and the fuel to a ratio at one condition. If we want to prescribe the OPER at one condition, we can use that target variable to define the synthesis variable design point OPER. And for all the off design conditions, we can use net thrust targets to compute fuel to air ratio synthesis variables. The first mentioned synthesis scheme is shown in some more detail here. Um, all the details that already apply for conventional aero engine design, such as the use of velocity ratio, pressure ratio exponent, etc., they were discussed elsewhere in the literature. Here, the main takeaway is really that for the boosted turbofan, the prescription of electrical boost happens via explicit closure equations and the synthesis variables. Uh, you can see them in the boxes. The low pressure spool shaft power is prescribed explicitly at certain values. In the other mentioned scheme, uh, we don't really have a full description in the literature. The table shows the information that one can deduce from the publication. The main difference here is that explicit equations are only used for two operating conditions at the aero design point ADP and at max cruise MCR. For the other operating conditions, um, the low pressure boost power is prescribed implicitly uh, via certain temperature ratios. The max climb MCL and max takeoff slash max cruise MCR respectively. What we did then was to complement the unknown parts of the scheme with other published multipoint schemes. Um, we used the ones originally from Canfield published by Kyprenides, but also the one from Jones and colleagues of NASA Glenn, which is shown only in the paper, not here in the slides. Again, all the details of that are beyond the time available for this presentation. Instead, let's talk about results. These were generated using model on impact. This is a system design engineering software, which is cloud native and accessible through your browser. Model on impact supports system simulation, optimization and analysis to enable engineering insight and decision making. The software is really a platform that supports multifaceted views. These are required as there are so many different people in organizations these days that greatly better benefit it if they could just get simulation results in their hands. Model and impact enables just that. In relation to legacy platforms, we thus get graphical workflows and a natural handling of all relevant physical domains, such as electrical components in this context. The results shown next explain how we're first using the model-centric view shown to the left to create the model and converge it interactively on the first case. Then we switch over to notebook mode in the middle and run trade studies. 
We start by opening the model-centric view in the browser by typing the address We open a workspace and create a model. For this application, we're using mainly Jet Propulsion Library. Most of the components are in the basic package, but we start with the boundary to ambient. We simply drag and drop the components and connect them. This forms the core and the bypass streams as well as the mechanical shaft connections. We then parameterize all components and run the first simulation. Not shown are the connections of the bleed air and cooling air, the convergence of the single point results and the assembly of the multipoint model. Due to the limited time available, we skip this here and instead review the final multipoint model. This has two layers. First, there is the top layer with the engine in different operating conditions and blocks implementing the control laws and design rules. But we can also step into the design model, which is top of climb in this case, where we see how the external inputs are routed into the components, or we step into off-design models such as cruise or rolling takeoff. From here, we converge the multipoint model the first time by assembling results generated with a single point model into guesses for the multipoint setup. It can then be useful to switch to the notebook view for sophisticated analyses. In this case, we're using parameter study notebook written in Python, for which convenient functions are available on top of the low-level model and solver APIs. The notebook consists of model setup, convergence to reference conditions, name and range of the variable changed in the parameter study, the parameter study itself, plotting and storage of results, in this case to Excel and PowerPoint archives for convenience. We can run the cells individually, such as you see here for loading the model, defining the variables to be extracted, the convergence to the reference conditions, as well as the parametric study. We will run all the remainder now in one go. And you can see here the simulations running. The plots are already being generated. You can also see to the right how our file is being generated with the results, which we can then open to see plots arranged by the user. Full cycle design studies, several design parameters are usually varied one at a time or concurrently, such as OPER or specific thrust. This slide now shows some results in terms of a parameter study varying OPER. It's therefore the epsis or x-axis. The plots show normalized specific fuel consumption and dimensional specific power consumption. The results are given follow all operating conditions in the multipoint setups. One color always corresponds to the same operating condition. The line style in turn, such as solid or dashed, refers to variation in electrical boost. The dashed lines provide the results for nominal boost, which is 2 megawatts in RTO, 0.75 megawatts in top of climb or 0 megawatts in cruise. The solid line has 50% more boost and the dotted lines 40% less. The SFC figure is normalized to SFC at OPER 50 at nominal boost. The results that show that SFC is improved as boost is increased, even for cruise where no boost is applied. However, SFC doesn't balance electric power on fuel consumption. This slide therefore also shows specific power consumption to the right, which is dimensional. This is also improved by electrically boosting. This is expected as fuel power is a type of primary power and thus less efficient to convert to useful power than electrical energy. Integral metrics such as mission block fuel would be even better, however. For both SFC and SPC, we see that optimal OPER, so for minimum fuel consumption or power consumption, is moving up.
as the boost is increased. Beyond this value, increased OPER leads to worse SFC, contrary to simplistic theory. The reasons are the increase in HPT cooling flows, which you see on the upper right, and the reduced HPC polytropic efficiency as the last stage plate length is reduced. Then suggests that uh, we prescribe temperature ratios in our closure equations. Before doing this, let's review the characteristics of these again across the same OPER parameter study imposing nominal increased or reduced post. The left column shows results of Kupernides and Zhao, and the right, the results of a lens type scheme. At the top, we see the dimensional T4 results, and at the bottom, we see the temperature ratios identified and used by lens. There are a few observations. First, we see that imposing a high temperature ratio can lead to a high boost as implied by lens. Uh, you can see this in the pink color, for instance. We also see that it may be difficult to recommend universal, universal temperature ratio thresholds. The value 0.96, for instance, is not meaningful for this cycle model. We see that imposing a high temperature ratio can lead to negative boost, which is not meaningful. So burning more fuel than required. This is also contrary to the results shown by Lens. And if we zoom in in detail, we can see that the mapping between temperature ratio and boost power is not always bijective. So uh, it's not always unique. If we want to prescribe a certain temperature ratio, there can be multiple solutions, one with higher or lower electrical boost power. We've then chosen temperature ratios in a second step uh, for design space exploration. We can see the numbers on the slide. Um, you do not see any boost variation anymore as the electrical boost is computed from the temperature ratios. There is a plot of this at the end where you can see the numbers instead. Um, and we see that we can, for SFC and SPC improvement, even increase OPER beyond the range covered here to yield further improvements in parable, parallel to the improvement achieved with the electrical boost. Again, here is the cooling fraction for the HPT and LPT, the HPC polytropic efficiency based on the length of the last stage blades of the HPC and the boost power that I mentioned, which is now computed from the temperature ratios. This already takes us to the conclusions. We saw that multipoint synthesis is feasible for design of electrically boosted GTFs. Both schemes yield cruise SFC improvements by downsizing the core. The schemes mainly differ in the closure equations defining the boost power, the prescription of boost power explicitly or as a fraction of low pressure total spool power therefore appears conceptually simpler, simpler and a bit more tangible. The use of temperature ratios instead uh, can be less intuitive, but once basic cycle characteristics have been explored, for instance, whether boost increases or reduces the T4 ratio and what typical ranges of T4 ratios are, then these closure equations can be helpful in gaining insights into the cycle design space. In case you have any comments or questions, please reach out to me or my colleague Peter. We hope that the work presented was interesting to you and thank you for your attention.